Hey, Christian, could you help me clear out the garage this weekend? Marley's voice cut through the clinking of silverware as they sat at the dining table. Her tone was casual, almost too casual, the way someone speaks when they're forcing normalcy. Christian, hunched over his laptop at the other end of the table, barely looked up. Sure, he muttered without much thought. Been meaning to get to it anyway. Great, Marley replied. The corners of her mouth turned up, but the smile didn't reach her eyes. She turned her attention back to her plate, cutting her food into small, deliberate pieces. Lewis, their teenage son, looked up from his phone with a smirk. You two sound like co-workers, not a married couple. His words hung in the air, biting and dismissive. Christian glanced at him, his brow furrowing slightly. Just finish your dinner, Lewis? Lewis shrugged and went back to scrolling, clearly unbothered. Christian pushed his plate aside, no longer hungry. The weight of the silence around the table was oppressive, each clink of a fork or sip of water amplifying the distance between them. Later that evening, Christian was in the garage, moving dusty boxes from one corner to another. The faint smell of oil and mildew filled the air as he uncovered forgotten relics of their life together. Old photo albums, Lewis's baby toys, a set of golf clubs he'd never had the time to use. Maybe this will finally get cleared out, he muttered to himself, grabbing a broom. As he worked, he heard Lewis's voice, muffled but unmistakable. It came from just outside the garage, behind the half-closed door. No, Andy, my dad is such a loser, Lewis said, his tone sharp and mocking. Christian froze, the broom slipping from his hand and clattering to the ground. He leaned closer to the door, his heart pounding. He has no idea about mom's boyfriend. The guy's way cooler. He even brings me lunch at school. Lewis continued laughing. My mom says he's more of a man than dad will ever be. Honestly, I prefer him as my dad over my current one. He lets me drive his supercar and says I'll be a real man like him one day. I feel bad for my dad. He's so clueless. Christian's hands trembled as the words sank in. His breathing quickened, his chest tightening. For a moment, he wondered if he'd misheard. But Lewis's tone was unmistakable, full of smugness, excitement, and disdain. The sound of Lewis's footsteps faded as he walked back into the house. Christian stayed frozen, staring at the garage floor. His mind raced, each piece of the puzzle snapping into place with painful clarity. Marley had been distant for months. The late-night phone call she dismissed as work, the sudden attention to her appearance, the secretive text she'd delete as soon as they arrived. It all made sense now. But hearing it from Lewis, his own son, made it unbearable. Christian grabbed a nearby box and hurled it across the garage. The crash echoed, but it did little to release the pressure building inside him. When he finally went inside, the house was quiet. Marley was in the living room, scrolling through her phone. She looked up briefly when he entered. Everything okay out there? She asked. Yeah, Christian said, forcing his voice to stay even. Just clearing some space? She nodded and went back to her phone, oblivious to the storm brewing in his chest. Christian climbed the stairs to their bedroom and sat on the edge of the bed, staring at the floor. Lewis's words replayed in his mind, each one cutting deeper than the last. Hours later, Marley slipped into bed beside him, her presence both familiar and alien. She turned off the light, the room plunging into darkness. Good night, she murmured, her voice soft. Christian didn't respond. His thoughts were louder than any words he could muster. He thought of the times he had stayed late at work to provide for their family, the weekends he'd sacrificed to make sure Lewis had everything he needed, the vacations he'd planned but never taken because something always came up. He thought of Marley's smile, once genuine and full of love, now cold and detached. He thought of Lewis, the boy he'd taught to ride a bike, the boy who had just torn him apart with a few careless words. The betrayal wasn't just Marley's. It was Lewis's too. Christian clenched his fists, his mind racing through a thousand emotions, anger, humiliation, heartbreak. But beneath it all, a single thought began to take shape. Something has to change. As Marley's breathing grew steady and rhythmic beside him, Christian stared at the ceiling, wide awake. The life he thought he knew had crumbled in a single evening. And yet, he felt something else stirring inside him. 
a quiet resolve. He wouldn't let this break him. At sunrise, Christian sat at the kitchen table, staring blankly at the screen of his laptop. The title of the document, Divorce Agreement, stared back at him. He had spent hours drafting it, his hands steady, his emotions raw but focused. He reread every clause, ensuring there were no loopholes, no room for manipulation. With a deep breath, he clicked send, forwarding the document to his lawyer with a brief note, effective immediately. The sound of soft footsteps interrupted his thoughts. He closed the laptop and took a long sip of coffee. Marley walked into the kitchen, her hair messy, wearing an oversized sweater. She yawned, completely unaware of the storm brewing around her. Morning, she said as she reached for the coffee pot. She poured herself a cup, adding cream and sugar, the same way she had for years. The domestic routine felt almost laughable to Christian now. Christian watched her, his face unreadable. Morning, he said quietly. Marley leaned against the counter, taking a sip of her coffee. You're up early. Couldn't sleep? He didn't answer immediately. Instead, he let the silence stretch between them, studying her. Finally, he placed his mug on the table and leaned back in his chair. Marley, do you have anything you want to tell me? Her movements froze for a split second. It was so brief that most people wouldn't have noticed, but Christian had been watching her closely. She quickly forced a smile and tilted her head. What do you mean? About Manuel, he said his tone even, almost casual. The mug slipped from her hand, shattering on the tile floor. Coffee splattered across her bare feet, but she didn't seem to notice. Her face went pale, and her lips parted as if to speak, but no sound came out. Don't bother denying it, Christian said, standing up. His voice was calm, but there was an edge to it now, a restrained anger bubbling beneath the surface. I know everything. Your affair. The lies. Even Lewis thinks I'm a joke. Marley took a step back, her hands trembling. Christian, I, I can explain. No, he interrupted, raising his hand to silence her. No excuses, Marley. You've made your choices. Now it's time for me to make mine. Marley's voice cracked as she spoke. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Christian, I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to what? Christian cut in, his voice rising slightly. Didn't mean to lie? To cheat? To humiliate me in front of my own son? She tried to step closer, her hands outstretched. Please, Christian, listen to me. It was a mistake. It didn't mean anything. A mistake? Christian's laugh was bitter sharp. A mistake is forgetting to pay a bill, Marley. You don't accidentally start a relationship with another man and drag our son into it. Marley's eyes filled with tears. I didn't drag Lewis into anything. <laughs> don't. Christian snapped his voice cold. Don't try to shift the blame. Lewis's words were clear. He called me a loser. Said Manuel's more of a man than I'll ever be. That he prefers him over his actual father. Marley's tears spilled over, and she covered her face with her hands. I didn't know he felt that way. Christian, I swear I never wanted to hurt you. You didn't just hurt me, Christian said, his voice firm. You destroyed everything. Our family. Our trust. Do you even realize the damage you've done? Marley fell to her knees, her sobs echoing in the kitchen. Please, Christian. Please. I'll do anything to fix this. We can go to therapy. I'll end it with Manuel. I'll. Stop. Christian said, cutting her off. He stared down at her, his expression unyielding. It's too late for that. You didn't just betray me, Marley. You turned our son against me. You let him think it was okay to mock me, to disrespect me, to side with your lover over his father. She looked up at him, her face streaked with tears. I'll make it right. I'll talk to Lewis. I'll... You think a few words are going to fix this? Christian shook his head. You don't even understand the gravity of what you've done. Do you? This isn't something you can just undo with apologies. The silence between them was heavy broken only by Marley's uneven breathing. Christian turned and walked to the counter, grabbing a towel. He handed it to her without a word, then started cleaning the spilled coffee from the floor. Marley sat on the floor, clutching the towel, but not moving to clean up. Christian, please, she whispered. We've been together for so long. Don't throw it all away. 
Christian paused, his hands gripping the edge of the counter. Don't throw it all away, he repeated, his voice low. You threw it away, Marley. The moment you decided Manuel was worth more than your marriage. The moment you decided to let our son idolize him instead of his own father. She flinched at his words, her sobs growing quieter. I don't know why I did it, she admitted. I was selfish, stupid. But I love you, Christian. I never stopped loving you. Christian turned to face her, his expression unreadable. Love, he said quietly. Don't talk to me about love, Marley. If you loved me, you wouldn't have done this. Love isn't a word you get to throw around when it's convenient. She opened her mouth to respond, but he held up his hand again. Save it, he said. I've heard enough. I've already sent the divorce papers to my lawyer. You'll get your copy soon. Marley's eyes widened in shock. Divorce, she whispered. Christian, no. Please don't do this. Think about Lewis. Think about our family. I am thinking about Lewis, Christian said firmly. And this is what's best for him. He needs to see that actions have consequences. That you can't betray someone and expect things to stay the same. Marley crawled closer, grabbing his hand. Don't do this, she begged. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll prove to you that I can change. Just please don't leave me. Christian pulled his hand away, his jaw tightening. It's done, Marley. You made your choice. Now I'm making mine. He turned and walked out of the kitchen leaving her on the floor. As he climbed the stairs to pack his things, her sobs followed him, but he didn't look back. For the first time in years, Christian felt a sense of clarity. He had been a good husband, a good father, and he didn't deserve the betrayal they had handed him. This was his line in the sand, and he wasn't going to let anyone cross it again. Christian sat in his car outside the bank, his hands gripping the steering wheel. He had just finished transferring every last cent from their joint accounts into one solely under his name. The bank teller had looked at him with curiosity when he requested the large withdrawal. But Christian didn't care. He was done explaining himself to anyone. He opened his phone, staring at the app for Lewis's college savings account. His thumb hovered over the transfer button. The words from the previous night played in his head. No, Manuel, my dad is such a loser. I prefer him as my dad over my current one. With a sharp inhale, Christian pressed the button. A confirmation screen appeared, and he clicked approve. The funds moved into his personal account instantly. By the time Christian returned home, it was mid-afternoon. The house was quiet, with only the faint hum of the refrigerator breaking the silence. He grabbed a pen and a piece of paper from the counter and began to write. His words were sharp and to the point. Enjoy your real man. You're his problem now. He placed the note on the counter where Marley would see it. His heart didn't race as it had earlier. Instead, a calm determination settled over him. Christian headed upstairs to the master bedroom. He pulled a suitcase from the closet and began packing his clothes. Shirts, jeans, and ties were thrown in haphazardly. He didn't care about folding them. This wasn't about leaving neatly. It was about leaving decisively. As he zipped up the suitcase, his eyes landed on a framed photo on the dresser. It was from a family vacation years ago. Marley was smiling brightly, holding Lewis, who was just a child at the time. Christian stood behind them, his hand resting on Marley's shoulder. The image felt like it belonged to another life. He picked up the photo, hesitated for a moment, then placed it face down. Downstairs, Christian heard the door slam. Lewis's voice echoed through the house. Mom? Dad? I'm home. Christian stepped into the hallway, suitcase in hand. Lewis saw him and frowned. What's going on? I'm leaving, Christian said simply. Lewis looked at the suitcase, then back at his father. Leaving? What do you mean? Where are you going? Christian walked past him, heading toward the front door. Don't worry about it, he said over his shoulder. Lewis followed, his tone shifting to frustration. Wait. Are you serious? You're just going to walk out? What about mom? Christian stopped at the door and turned to face him. Your mom made her choices. So did you. Lewis's brows furrowed in confusion. What are you talking about? I heard your conversation last night, Christian said evenly. About how much of a loser I am. About how you think Manuel is a better dad. Congratulations. You got what you wanted. Lewis's face went pale. Dad, I didn't mean... Don't, Christian cut him off. You said exactly what you meant. 
And now, you can live with the consequences. Lewis stood frozen as Christian walked out the door. Outside, the sky was a dull gray, matching Christian's mood. He loaded the suitcase into his car and climbed into the driver's seat. As he pulled out of the driveway, he glanced in the rearview mirror. The house, once a symbol of his family, now felt like a prison he was finally escaping. Christian's first stop was his lawyer's office. The receptionist greeted him with a warm smile, but Christian didn't return it. I need to finalize a divorce, he said, placing a printed copy of the agreement on the desk. The lawyer, an older man with a sharp suit and glasses, nodded as he read through the document. Looks thorough, he said. Are you sure about this? It's a big step. Christian's jaw tightened. I've never been more sure of anything. The lawyer nodded. I'll get this filed immediately. Do you want to serve the papers directly? Or should we handle that for you? Send them to the house, Christian said. She'll know what they're about. Christian's next stop was the school where Lewis's college fund had been set up. He met with the financial officer, a middle-aged woman with kind eyes. I need to cancel the account for my son, Lewis Miller, he said. The woman blinked surprised. Are you sure? That's a significant amount of money. I'm sure, Christian replied. She typed in her computer, her fingers moving quickly. The funds have already been transferred. Is there anything else you'd like us to do? No, Christian said standing. That's all. By the time the sun began to set, Christian was on the road, leaving town with no clear destination. He drove past the places that had once been part of his routine, the coffee shop where Marley used to meet him for lunch, the park where he'd taught Lewis to ride a bike, the movie theater they used to visit as a family. Each location felt like a chapter from a book he no longer wanted to read. His phone buzzed on the passenger seat. It was a text from Marley. Christian, where are you? Lewis said you left. What's going on? He ignored it. A second text followed. Please come back. We could talk about this. Christian tossed the phone into the glove compartment and kept driving. As night fell, he checked into a small motel off the highway. The room was basic. A bed, a desk, and a TV mounted on the wall. Christian placed his suitcase on the bed and sat down heavily in the chair by the desk. He opened his laptop and logged into his bank account. The numbers stared back at him, a tangible reminder of the life he was leaving behind. He felt no guilt, no second thoughts. Everything he had taken, he had earned. For the first time in years, Christian allowed himself to relax. He wasn't a husband or a father anymore, at least not in the traditional sense. He was just Christian, a man with a chance to start over. The next morning, Christian woke up early, the faint light of dawn seeping through the motel curtains. He grabbed his phone from the glove compartment, scrolling through the dozens of missed calls and texts from Marley and Lewis. He didn't bother reading them. Instead, he composed a single message and sent it to both of them. You made your choices. Now you'll live with them. Don't contact me again. He turned off the phone, placed it in a drawer, and stepped outside. The air was cool and crisp, the sky painted in hues of orange and pink. For the first time in a long while, Christian felt a sense of peace. As he got into his car and pulled back onto the highway, he didn't look back. The rhythmic sound of waves crashing against the shore filled the air as Christian jogged along the beach. The salty breeze was invigorating, a sharp contrast to the stagnant air of his old life. He paused at a small cafe overlooking the ocean, wiping the sweat from his brow as the morning sun cast a golden glow over the water. Morning Christian called the cafe owner, a cheerful older man named Tony. Morning Tony, Christian replied, catching his breath. Christian had built a life here, far from the memories of betrayal. He owned a thriving marketing agency, one he had started with nothing but a laptop and a relentless drive to succeed. The business now employed over 50 people and catered to high-profile clients, but Christian kept his routine simple. Mornings on the beach, evenings with Mackenda, and a life devoid of the chaos that had once consumed him. Later that day, Christian walked into his sleek office, greeted by the hum of productivity. His assistant, Maya, handed him a folder. Here's the pitch for the ecotourism campaign, she said. Thanks, Maya, Christian said, flipping through the pages. He glanced at his watch. Let's go over it at noon. As he walked into his private office, his phone buzzed on the desk. It was an unknown number. Christian hesitated before answering. Hello, Dad. 
The voice on the other end was shaky, hesitant. Christian froze, recognizing Lewis's voice instantly. It had been years since he'd heard it. Lewis, Christian said cautiously. What do you want? There was a pause before Lewis spoke again. I just, I wanted to talk. To apologize. Christian leaned back in his chair, his expression unreadable. Apologize? For what, Lewis? For everything, Lewis said quickly. For what I said about you. For not standing up for you when mom. His voice trailed off. Christian's tone remained calm, but distant. It's been five years, Lewis. Why now? I didn't understand back then, Lewis admitted. I thought Manuel was cool, that he'd make life better. But he's not. He's nothing like you, Dad. Christian didn't respond immediately. Instead, he let the silence stretch, giving Lewis the space to continue. Mom and Manuel broke up, Lewis said, his voice quieter. She's struggling. And I'm, I'm struggling too. I just, I miss you, Dad. That evening, Christian shared the conversation with Mackinda as they sat on their terrace overlooking the ocean. Mackinda was everything Marley hadn't been, grounded, compassionate, and supportive. What do you think? Mackinda asked, setting her wine glass on the table. Christian sighed, running a hand through his hair. I don't know. Part of me wants to shut the door forever. But the other part, he's still my son, Mackinda. Mackinda reached for his hand, her touch reassuring. You've come so far, Christian. You've built something incredible. Maybe this is a chance to show Lewis who you really are now. A week later, Christian met Lewis at a neutral spot, a quiet park near the city center. Lewis looked older, his features sharper, but there was a weariness in his eyes that Christian hadn't expected. Thanks for meeting me, Lewis said, shuffling awkwardly. Christian nodded, keeping his expression neutral. What do you want to talk about? Lewis hesitated before speaking. I've been thinking about everything that happened. Ma Manuel, me. I was so stupid back then. I thought Manuel was this great guy because he bought me things and let me do whatever I wanted. But when things got tough, he didn't care. He left. Christian folded his arms, waiting for more. And mom, she's not the same, Lewis continued. She's bitter, angry all the time. She says it's because she lost you. But I know it's more than that. She knows she messed up. Christian's voice was steady. And what about you, Lewis? Where do you stand in all this? Lewis looked down at his hands. I hate what I said to you. I hate how I treated you. You didn't deserve any of it. You were always there for me. And I threw it away for someone who didn't even care. For the first time, Christian saw genuine remorse in his son's eyes. He leaned forward, his tone softening slightly. Do you understand why I left? Lewis nodded. Yeah. You had to. You couldn't stay in that mess. Christian sighed, the tension in his shoulders easing just a bit. You're right. I couldn't. But that doesn't mean I didn't care about you. I just couldn't stay where I wasn't respected. Over the next few weeks, Christian and Lewis started to rebuild their relationship. It wasn't easy. There were moments of awkwardness, moments where the past threatened to resurface, but they kept trying. One evening, Lewis visited Christian's home for dinner. Mackenda greeted him warmly, her kindness putting him at ease. So, you're the famous Lewis, Mackenda said with a smile. Lewis nodded shyly. Yeah, I guess so. As they ate, Lewis watched the way Christian and Mackenda interacted. There was an ease between them, a mutual respect and affection that Lewis hadn't seen in his parents' marriage. After dinner, Lewis pulled Christian aside. She's great, Dad, he said. I'm glad you found someone like her. Christian smiled, the first genuine smile he had shared with his son in years. She's been a big part of my life, Lewis. I hope you'll get to know her better. Meanwhile, Marley's life continued to unravel. Manuel had left her in debt, and she struggled to make ends meet. She had reached out to Christian multiple times, but he never responded. One day, she showed up at his office unannounced. Maya, his assistant, intercepted her. I need to see Christian, Marley demanded. I'm sorry, ma'am, but Mr. Miller doesn't take personal visitors without an appointment, Maya said firmly. Tell him it's Marley, she insisted. Maya relayed the message, but Christian didn't budge. Tell her I have nothing to say, he instructed. When Maya returned with the message, Marley's face crumpled. She left the office, defeated. Christian's transformation was more than financial or emotional. 
it was complete. He had rebuilt his life from the ground up, creating something stronger and more fulfilling than he had ever imagined. As he walked along the beach one evening with Mackenda, her hand in his, he felt a deep sense of peace. You've come a long way, Mackenda said, leaning her head against his shoulder. I have, Christian agreed, and I'm not looking back. The waves lapped at their feet, washing away the footprints behind them. It was a fitting symbol for Christian's journey, a reminder that the past, no matter how painful, could always be left behind. Christian stared at the text message, the words glowing on his phone screen. His first instinct was to ignore it, to push it into the void of all the other missed calls and unread messages from Lewis and Marley over the years. But this time, something felt different. Lewis wasn't the arrogant boy who idolized Manuel anymore. His message carried a weight of remorse that hadn't been there before. Christian took a deep breath and typed a reply. We can talk. Meet me at the Lighthouse Cafe tomorrow at noon. He hit send and immediately felt a swirl of emotions, anger, curiosity, and a flicker of something that felt suspiciously like hope. The next day, Christian arrived at the cafe a few minutes early. He chose a table by the window, overlooking the water. The Lighthouse Cafe had become one of his favorite spots since he'd moved to this small coastal town. It was a place of tranquility, far removed from the chaos of his old life. Lewis arrived five minutes late, his shoulders slumped and his eyes darting nervously. He looked older than Christian remembered, but there was still a trace of the boy who used to beg him for piggyback rides. Lewis spotted Christian and hesitated at the door before making his way over. Dad, he said, his voice tentative. Lewis, Christian replied, gesturing to the seat across from him. Lewis sat down, fiddling with his hands. A waitress approached, but neither of them ordered. The silence stretched for a moment before Lewis spoke. Thanks for meeting me, he said. Christian leaned back in his chair, studying his son. Why now, Lewis? It's been years. Lewis looked down at his hands, his fingers twisting together. I didn't know how to face you. I was a kid back then, and I didn't understand what I was doing. But now, I can't stop thinking about everything I said, everything I did. I need to make it right. Christian's expression remained neutral. And what exactly do you think you did wrong? Lewis swallowed hard. I chose Manuel over you. I talked about you like you were nothing. But you weren't nothing, Dad. You were everything. And I was too stupid to see it. Christian's eyes narrowed. You're right. You were stupid. But it wasn't just you. Your mother made her choices, and you followed her lead. You didn't just betray me, Lewis. You disrespected me. Do you know what that feels like? Lewis's voice cracked. I do now. After Manuel left, everything fell apart. Mom started drinking more, and we lost the house. I thought Manuel was this amazing guy, but he didn't care about us. Not like you did. Christian let the words sink in. He took a sip of water, buying himself time to think. So, what do you want from me, Lewis? Forgiveness? A second chance? I just want to be your son again, Lewis said, his voice barely above a whisper. Christian leaned forward, his voice calm but firm. Do you know what it took for me to rebuild my life after what you and your mother did? I left everything behind. I worked harder than I ever have to build something for myself. I've moved on, Lewis. I'm happy now. Why should I let you back in? Lewis's face fell. And for a moment, Christian thought he might cry. But instead, Lewis straightened in his chair and met Christian's gaze. Because I need you, Dad. I know I don't deserve it. But I'm asking you to give me a chance to make things right. Christian studied his son, searching for signs of sincerity. You said some awful things, Lewis. Things that are hard to forget. You have to understand that this isn't just about saying sorry and moving on. Trust takes time to rebuild. I'll do whatever it takes. Lewis said earnestly. I just want to prove to you that I've changed. Christian sighed and glanced out the window. The waves crashed against the rocks, steady and relentless. I'll think about it, he said finally. For the next few weeks, Lewis made an effort to prove himself. He called Christian regularly, sharing updates about his life and asking for advice. Christian remained cautious but began to see glimpses of the boy he had once adored. One evening, Mackinda noticed Christian staring at his phone, lost in thought. Everything okay? She asked, setting a cup of tea on the table beside him. Christian looked up and smiled faintly. 
Lewis has been trying to reconnect. I'm not sure what to make of it. Mackenda sat down beside him, her hand resting on his. Do you think he's sincere? Christian shrugged. I think he's trying. But part of me wonders if I'm setting myself up for more pain. McKenna squeezed his hand. You've worked so hard to rebuild your life, Christian. But maybe this is a chance to heal, not just for Lewis, but for you too. A few weeks later, Lewis visited Christian's home for the first time. He arrived early, holding a bouquet of flowers for McKenna. These are for you, Lewis said, handing them over nervously. McKenna smiled warmly. Thank you, Lewis. That's very thoughtful. As they sat down for dinner, Lewis seemed hesitant but eager to engage. He asked Mackenda about her work and listened attentively as she shared stories about her life with Christian. After dinner, Lewis and Christian stepped outside to talk. The moonlight reflected off the ocean, casting a silvery glow over the beach. I like her, Lewis said, nodding toward the house. She seems good for you. She is, Christian said simply. Lewis hesitated before speaking again. Do you think we'll ever get back to where we were, Dad? Before everything happened? Christian looked out at the waves, considering his answer. I don't know, Lewis, but I'm willing to try. As the weeks turned into months, Christian and Lewis continued to rebuild their relationship. It wasn't easy. There were moments of tension, moments where the past threatened to resurface, but they worked through it together. For Christian, it was a reminder that healing wasn't a destination, but a journey, one that required patience, effort, and a willingness to forgive. For Lewis, it was a chance to prove that he could be the son his father deserved. And for both of them, it was a new beginning, a chance to turn the page and write a better chapter together. Christian waited at the small cafe where he had agreed to meet Lewis. The hum of conversations around him and the clinking of coffee cups filled the air but his focus was on the entrance. Lewis arrived, shoulders slouched, and eyes downcast. As he approached the table, Christian stood, his expression neutral. Dad, Lewis greeted softly. Lewis, Christian replied, gesturing for him to sit. The silence between them lingered as they looked at each other. Lewis broke at first. Thanks for meeting me. Christian nodded, his tone measured. You said you wanted to talk. So talk. Lewis hesitated his hands gripping the edge of the table. I've been thinking a lot about everything, what I did, what I said. I know I can't take it back, but I need you to know how sorry I am. His voice cracked as he continued. I was stupid. I thought Manuel was someone to look up to, but he wasn't. He left us with nothing, Dad. And I pushed away the one person who was always there for me, you. Christian leaned back, crossing his arms. You pushed me away because you didn't respect me, Louis. You called me a loser and sided with a man who didn't care about you. His voice was calm, but there was an edge of pain beneath his words. I was wrong, Lewis admitted, tears forming in his eyes. I didn't understand what you went through or what you gave up for us. And when you left, I realized how much I needed you. Christian studied his son for a moment. And why should I believe you've changed? Lewis wiped his eyes and met Christian's gaze. Because I have. Losing you showed me what a real man looks like. It's not about cars or money. It's about integrity, strength, and being there for the people you love. I see that now, Dad. I see you. As the conversation unfolded, the door to the cafe swung open again. Christian stiffened as Marley walked in, her face pale and drawn. Behind her was Manuel, his posture slouched and his once confident demeanor reduced to a shadow of what it had been. Christian, Marley called her voice trembling. She approached the table hesitantly, her hands ringing. Please, I need to talk to you. Christian stood, his face hardening. What are you doing here, Marley? I, I heard Lewis was meeting you, she stammered. I just wanted a chance to explain. To apologize. Manuel shuffled forward, his eyes avoiding Christian's. Yeah, man, we, uh, we made mistakes, he muttered, though there was little conviction in his tone. Christian ignored Manuel entirely, focusing on Marley. You had years to apologize, Marley. Years to explain. And you never did. Why now? Marley's voice cracked as she tried to respond. Because I lost everything, Christian. You. The house. Manuel, she shot a bitter glance at the man behind her. He left me with nothing but debt and lies. Manuel bristled. 
Hey, don't pin everything on me, Marley. You were in this mess, too. Shut up, Manuel. Marley snapped, her composure breaking. She turned back to Christian, her eyes desperate. I made a mistake, Christian. I thought Manuel was something he wasn't. I was stupid, selfish. But I see it now. You were the best thing that ever happened to me. Christian's expression didn't waver. And what? You think a tearful apology will fix everything? Marley's knees buckled as she fell to the floor, sobbing. Please, Christian. I'll do anything. Just give me another chance. I'll make it right, I swear. Manuel shifted uncomfortably. Yeah, I'll go. He mumbled, backing toward the door. This isn't my fight. Stay where you are, Christian said sharply, his gaze finally landing on Manuel. You're just as responsible for this as she is. You paraded into my life, played the hero for my son, and destroyed my family. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Manuel hesitated, then shrugged. Look, man, I didn't mean for things to go this way. It was fun at first, but... Fun? Christian interrupted, his voice rising for the first time. You call destroying my marriage and manipulating my son fun. Manuel stammered. I didn't mean... Save it. Christian snapped. You're pathetic. Lewis watched the exchange, his face pale. Dad, he said quietly, please don't let them drag you back into this. They're not worth it. Christian turned to Lewis, his expression softening slightly. You're right. They're not. He looked down at Marley, who was still kneeling on the floor, her tears pooling. You made your bed, Marley. Now lie in it. I've moved on, and I'm not looking back. You want a man well? You got him. Deal with the consequences. Christian grabbed his coat and turned to leave. Lewis, are you coming? Lewis hesitated, glancing at his mother. Her tear-streaked face broke his heart, but he knew the truth. She wasn't the person who had raised him. She was someone who had torn apart their family. Yeah, I'm coming, Lewis said, following his father out the door. As they walked down the street, Lewis broke the silence. I can't believe you kept your cool back there. Christian glanced at him. I didn't. I just learned how to control it. Lewis nodded, his respect for his father growing. I'm sorry for everything, Dad. I mean it. Christian put a hand on Lewis's shoulder. We got a long way to go, Lewis. But this is a start. For the first time in years, Christian felt a sense of closure. He had faced the people who had wronged him and come out stronger. Now, it was time to focus on the future. One free of betrayal. Filled with the possibility of healing and new beginnings. Christian drove back to his seaside home, the crisp evening air rushing through the open windows. The confrontation at the cafe replayed in his mind, not with anger, but with finality. For the first time, he felt unshackled from the weight of betrayal. The past no longer held power over him. He had chosen to move forward, and this time, the decision felt unbreakable. As he pulled into the driveway, the porch light flickered on. McKenna stood at the doorway, her silhouette framed by the warm glow from inside. She stepped out as he parked, concern etched across her face. How did it go? She asked softly as Christian approached. He set his keys down on the small table by the door and took her hands in his. It's over. Really over. Marley begged, Manuel slithered away, and Lewis, he's trying, but he's got a long road ahead of him. McKenna's expression softened. And you? How do you feel? Christian took a deep breath, his gaze meeting hers. Free. For the first time in years, I feel free. Makinda smiled, pulling him into a hug. Good. You deserve that. The next morning, Christian sat on the back deck with his coffee, watching the sun rise over the ocean. Makinda joined him, carrying her own mug and a small plate of pastries. What's next? She asked as she settled into the chair beside him. Christian thought for a moment before answering. Lewis is trying to reconnect. I think I owe him a chance, but it's going to take time. He's got to earn back my trust. McKenna nodded. He's young. He'll make mistakes, but the fact that he's trying says a lot. You'll figure it out together. And Marley? McKenna's question hung in the air for a moment. Christian shook his head. There's nothing left there. She made her choices, and I've made mine. Letting her back into my life would undo... Everything I've built here, with you. Makinda reached over, her hand resting on his. I'm glad you know what you want. That's what matters. Weeks turned into months, 
and Christian's life began to settle into a comfortable rhythm. He and Makinda worked on small projects around the house, took long walks on the beach, and enjoyed quiet evenings filled with laughter and conversation. Lewis visited occasionally, their relationship slowly mending. Each visit brought cautious progress, small moments of shared understanding, a rebuilding of trust that felt fragile but genuine. One evening, Lewis arrived unannounced, holding a worn photo album. Dad, he said standing awkwardly at the door, I found this in some of Mom's old stuff. Thought you might want it. Christian hesitated before taking the album. The leather cover was scuffed, and the edges of the pages were frayed. Inside were snapshots of their old life, vacations, birthdays, candid moments that once seemed ordinary, but now felt bittersweet. Lewis pointed to a picture of them fishing at a lake. He was about eight, grinning from ear to ear as he held up a tiny fish. I remember that day, Lewis said. You stayed out there for hours because I didn't want to leave. Christian smiled faintly. You wouldn't let me. You kept saying, one more fish, Dad. Just one more. Lewis laughed softly, then grew serious. I want us to have days like that again. I know it won't be easy, but I'm willing to put in the work. Christian closed the album and looked at his son. So, am I Lewis? But it's going to take time. Trust isn't built overnight. Lewis nodded, his eyes earnest. I understand. I'm not going anywhere this time, Dad. Meanwhile, news of Marley and Manuel trickled in through mutual acquaintances and the occasional comment from Lewis. Their lives had taken a sharp turn for the worse. Manuel's business ventures had failed, leaving him buried in debt. He had abandoned Marley shortly after, disappearing without a trace. Marley, once so proud and self-assured, was now a shadow of her former self. Mom's working as a cashier at a grocery store, Lewis mentioned during one visit. She's barely getting by. Christian's response was measured. She made her choices, Lewis, and she has to live with them. Lewis didn't press the issue. He seemed to understand that his father had moved past the point of pity or resentment. One evening, as Christian and Makinda sat on the beach watching the waves, Makinda brought up a topic they hadn't discussed before. Have you thought about what's next for us? She asked. Christian raised an eyebrow. What do you mean? I mean, we've built this life together. It's steady, and it's good. But what's the next step? Do we stay here, just the two of us? Or do we start thinking about something bigger? Christian considered her words. Bigger, huh? Like what? Makinda smiled. I don't know. Maybe travel more. Or maybe even marriage. Christian chuckled, though his eyes softened. Marriage, huh? You think you can handle me for the long haul? Makinda leaned in, her eyes twinkling. I've handled you this far, haven't I? Christian reached for her hand, his smile genuine. Let's take it one step at a time. But yeah, I like the sound of bigger. As time went on, Christian found himself fully immersed in the life he had rebuilt. The past, once a source of pain, now felt like a distant memory. His days were filled with purpose, his relationships, especially with Lewis and Makinda, growing stronger every day. For Marley, the story was different. She remained stuck in the consequences of her actions, a reminder of what could have been. But Christian no longer dwelled on her plight. His new beginning wasn't just about starting over, it was about learning, growing, and embracing a life that was truly his own. For the first time, Christian felt like he was exactly where he was meant to be.